let's welcome Andres Sidel and let's find something new about how to create production environments, secure production environments using Docker. Hello, hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, for thanks for coming. Uh, first of all, I, uh, as uh, my mate said, I'm gonna talk about uh, Docker security environments. And I'm going to give you some uh, best practices uh, you can use uh, uh, when you use Docker. Uh, first of all, who, who am I? Uh, I'm Andres Hidel uh, from uh, Bing Corbis, which is a, a Mexican company, software company. And I'm a full stack developer. I've been using Docker for two years, almost two years now. Uh, but uh, I've been uh, doing some uh, dev operations automating tasks, uh, manage inf infrastructure. So nowadays, I don't know what, what am I. So uh, uh, let's uh, talk about a little bit of the content of this talk. Uh, we're going to uh, we're, we're gonna know how uh, containers works, uh, what is behind the scenes when, when you use uh, Docker containers. And we're going to list the, the main concerns uh, you have to keep in mind when you use uh, Docker and how to create and maintain secure images because uh, images are the base of security in Docker and how to limit risk and good practices. Uh, this is a, a lot of tips that uh, we're going to share with you. So how Docker works. Uh, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that containers are not uh, virtual machines. Uh, virtual machines use a uh, hypervisor to manage the execution of a guest operating system. So uh, containers uh, are quite different. Containers are a bunch of processes. Uh, uh, containers can run uh, service, services. Install pack you can install packages in those containers. Uh, containers have uh, network interfaces but they're not uh, uh, virtual machines. They feel like uh, virtual machines, but uh, they're not. Uh, containers are possible because uh, of two uh, feature kernels, which are C groups and namespaces. So what are uh, C groups? So which is, what's this feature? Uh, this feature limits accounts and isolates the resources of the host. And uh, if you have CPU memory, this I.O., uh, network I.O., uh, it says, okay, I'm gonna give uh, two gigabytes to this uh, container. Um, I'm gonna enable these net network features for, for this uh, container and uh, manage this as a hierarchical groups. Uh, all the children of a, of, uh, of a process uh, is going to be the same limits. It's going to have the same limits. Uh, and what are namespaces? Uh, namespaces is the feature that isolates containers. Uh, the processes uh, will have their own system view. Uh, when you use uh, containers, you, for example, uh, do PS in a container, and you're just going to uh, uh, see just the processes that are running in that container. Um, so you can isolate a file system, memory, uh, user, and uh, networking. It's like, it, that's the reason uh, it's like, uh, it's root with steroids. Containers are root with, uh, root with steroids. And then uh, uh, C groups limit uh, how much you can see and namespaces limit uh, what you can see. Okay, and next, what are kernel capabilities? Uh, in a traditional uh, Unix system, uh, we have two kinds of processes, uh, which are privileged processes, uh, whose effective user ID is zero, basically are the processes, uh, the root processes, and unprivileged processes, uh, uh, we, whose effective uh, user ID is not zero. And these, these uh, processes ha uh, are attached to f uh, full uh, permission checking based on the, on the, on the process, uh, permissions, etc. 
and uh, Linux uh, kernel capabilities allows us to uh, fine grind this access, this, this access uh, control system. Uh, for example, uh, a capability, uh, this capability uh, shown, uh, make arbitrary changes of the file. Uh, UID, uh, this allows us to uh, change the permissions of files and we can uh, uh, make uh, these changes in every single file in the, on the system. Okay, if you browse the, uh, the code of, of Docker, the source code of Docker, you're gonna see uh, a list of capabilities. This is the default list of capabilities that uh, Docker uh, has as default. And if you want to see a list, uh, a complete list of the capabilities that are supported by, kernel, by, the, by the kernel, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the URL, and you can uh, study. So, uh, what are the main risks for when you use uh, Docker? Uh, uh, what are the concerns? First of all, uh, the Docker daemon. Uh, it requires uh, root privileges when you uh, use uh, the Docker daemon. So if you control the, the Docker daemon, you will have access to the root. And if you, if you enable the rest, uh, RESTful API, uh, this is not authenticated by default. So if, you, if an attacker uh, discovered your, uh, your API, uh, remember that uh, if you uh, have root access to the, well, if you control the, the Docker daemon, you will have root access or root privileges to, in the host. So how can, uh, how can I secure the, the RESTful API? Well, you can uh, enable the TLS uh, by using the, the flag TLS verify on, uh, when running the uh, the daemon, and you can create a CI server and client keys. This is, that's for authentication, but what about authorization? Uh, Docker's out of the box authorization uh, is all or nothing. You can do everything or you cannot do uh, nothing. So uh, Docker uh, provides a generic API, so you can uh, create an authorization plugin by yourself and uh, bypass this, uh, this problem. And escaping. Escaping is another concern. Uh, this is caused by allowing uh, privilege operations, not removing all possible capabilities, uh, weak network defaults, and obviously boxing uh, application code. It means that uh, uh, containers sometimes have uh, a lot of capabilities, and if you uh, if you uh, do, if you add other capabilities yeah, that you uh, may not need, uh, this could be a problem. Uh, remember that a user in a container with root capabilities uh, could be wrote in the host. So, how can you prevent this? Uh, well, this is I'm, I'm going to explain uh, this uh, each item of this list. So, first of all, uh, drop cap capabilities. As we saw, uh, capabilities, uh, with capabilities we can uh, perform uh, root operations or, or operations that, that uh, requires root privileges. But uh, for example, in this case, uh, in this example, I, I'm dropping all the capabilities. Uh, basically, uh, running a container like this, uh, just, you can uh, just, just uh, uh, run a clock, for example. Basically, you can do nothing. And drop a single capability, you can uh, drop, uh, uh, for example, shown, and uh, this uh, container won't be able to change permissions. And you can combine flags, for example, drop all capabilities and add the capabilities that uh, you're going to use. And some, uh, I think you, uh, you're gonna start asking, how can I know which capabilities do I, uh, I'm gonna need? So the answer is, uh, you have to uh, uh, keep in mind uh, which capabilities you, you could use or you can uh, study them. And if you uh, think that you have in your code a process which could use a, a strange capability and you are not uh, secure, you can run your test. You, if you have a set of tests, uh, you can uh, run them and see if 
uh, if you need or drop on or add a capability. Uh, remember that uh, containers uh, just have to be, uh, uh, containers have to have uh, no more uh, than they need. Okay, and this is more easy. Uh, enable App Armor. Uh, App Armor is a Linux security module uh, which is in charge of um, secure the operating system and the, and the programs. So App Armor is, uh, uses uh, security profiles to uh, create a granular uh, configuration over capabilities for your containers. And then if you are using Ubuntu right now, uh, you uh, probably uh, is, is installed in your Ubuntu and is running, and uh, you can check it uh, with this command, uh, AA status, and uh, this is uh, are going to list, this uh, command is going to list the, the profiles that, uh, that are uh, loaded. And well, once you create your profiles, you can uh, create, your, you can load them uh, with uh, this simple command. And if you want a container with, uh, with this profile, you just have to uh, indicate what's the name of your profile, and that's all. Is, uh, is, is sometimes it's quite simple. And uh, there is a, uh, this, this tool, uh, which uh, his name is uh, Bain. It's used for uh, create uh, profiles in an easy way. And define a user. Uh, always, uh, or most of the cases, uh, is better if you create an user inside your Docker files with the user add command and add a user di directive, not uh, run your containers with uh, root access. And multiple containers. Uh, this is a big topic. Uh, this could be uh, another uh, one hour talk, but uh, I'm just gonna list the benefits of this uh, of this approach. Uh, basically, the, the benefits are limiting containers, uh, sorry, limited, limiting attack scenarios, uh, helping prevent uh, compromise uh, your container, simplifying development, allowing for easy upgrade paths. Uh, if you, uh, and it's very easy to run just uh, with the flag read only, and uh, you can uh, freeze the file system. Uh, if you uh, run a container with, with this flag, uh, and for example, an attacker uh, uh, breaks out the container, uh, the attacker won't be able to uh, write any file or edit any file, nothing. Uh, so it will be uh, better. And you can combine it, combine it with, uh, with using volumes. So you can uh, freeze the, 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 the file system of, you, of your container but uh, you can add a volume and, and write on, on, on that volume. So you can combine the, this, uh, uh, these operations. And another big uh, concern is uh, image provenance. So when you uh, use uh, systems that communicate with, among networks, trust is a central concern. So um, when you use a Docker engine, you pull uh, images and you uh, push images. So how can you verify that you're getting the, the, the exact image that the developer has created? Or how can you know that uh, the, images, the image has not been tempered with? Uh, Docker has uh, solved this problem with uh, Docker Counter Trust, which uh, basically uh, create uh, or sign the images with uh, certificates and using digital signatures. And, and this is uh, uh, when you, and it's, it's very easy to, to activate, just uh, export Docker Content Trust, and that's all the first operation that you, uh, that you do as a publisher. For example, uh, build, uh, uh, run, or, um, or build, run, or uh, pull uh, images, and it's going to, uh, it's going to, to work with this uh, feature. 
Um, if you are a publisher and you are using Docker Content Trust, uh, the first time is, uh, Docker, Docker Content Trust is going to create uh, the, uh, the keys and everything is uh, behind the scenes so uh, you don't need to, to worry uh, about nothing. You don't have to learn a uh, special uh, combination of, of the commands, etc. And why not, why uh, Docker uses uh, Docker Content Trust and not uh, GPG? Uh, because uh, Docker Content Trust uh, creates a, signa a digital signature uh, with time time stamp, so you can uh, enable it. You can disable uh, uh, other images. For example, uh, this Im this image is not longer available, so uh, you 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 have to download this. So with this uh, with this approach, uh, you will be uh, you will have the the up to date images on your uh, on your containers, and of course, uh, uh, you have to create security images, uh, which is the, the next topic. Uh, how can you create and maintain secure images? Uh, first of all, uh, verify the software. This is very important, and uh, you have to verify the authenticity of the. Uh, of the software that you are downloading. And when you're using a package management, uh, uh, this uh, takes care uh, for you, so you don't have to uh, uh, worry too much. But if you are uh, downloading uh, raw files or uh, binaries, um, uh, you, you should use, for example, uh, HTTP is, is in, instead of HTTP and uh, you have to uh, check for uh, signed files and valid checksums with uh, EPG, uh, for example, uh, when it comes to par uh, third party repositories. And obviously, uh, you could use this in your uh, bash scripts or your background files, not just Docker. Um, writing better uh, Docker files. Uh, uh, this uh, this is important because uh, sometimes if you want to have uh, consistency in your images, it's better uh, 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 pull the, the specific tag. Uh, so it's better, for example, from Alpine 3.4 instead of from Alpine. And never run as root. Well, this is, uh, uh, this is like the, uh, tell me, okay. Uh, this is important. Uh, this is uh, super important. So uh, always uh, at the user directive. So uh, if you use the user directive, you may you need the user add comment and drop privileges as possible. And if you have to use sudo, uh, don't use uh, sudo. It's better to go sudo. So you can use uh, minimal base images. Uh, Ubuntu and CentOS, for example, uh, have uh, 60 megabytes. And if you use Alpine, it's, uh, it's a Linux uh, minimal uh, base image. Uh, it's five, me five megabytes. And you could uh, reduce attack surfaces, uh, complexity, uh, and size of the images. This is an example of using Alpine. Uh, uh, with these lines, uh, you you can uh, install the Python uh, runtime. Uh, very easy. Uh, APK is the uh, package manager of Alpine. So other best, best practices: uh, upgrade whenever possible, uh, especially when it comes about uh, security uh, features, the Docker uh, daemon and client, the Docker engine. Uh, about uh, using Docker with privileged flag, uh, this uh, this flag uh, is going to uh, remove almost all the limits that containers have, so provide known security. Uh, about providing access to the Docker user or the Docker group, uh, as, as I mentioned, if you are uh, if you have control of the uh, Docker daemon, you could be uh, you could have root uh, access to in the in the host, uh, avoid providing access to the Docker Unix socket or REST API to potentially interest uh, colors or container 
It's especially when, when you use uh, uh, Jenkins, for example, or your, your Jenkins manage the, the, the Docker daemon in a certain way. Uh, you have to keep in mind uh, this, this tip. Um, consider using Docker bench security. Uh, this, as the repo says, uh, have thousands of common best practices around Docker containers in production. Uh, it's just a script and it's uh, elevated privilege uh, for uh, running it. Uh, remove uh, set UID and set GID binaries. Uh, I'm sure that you're not going to need, need them in most of the cases. So it's better not having it, having them. Um, when exporting ports or exposing containers to the network, uh, uh, you don't know, but uh, Docker exposes to all the interfaces, so you have to be sure that you are exposing the uh, uh, the container, the, the network, to to the to the right interface. And uh, follow best practices when writing uh, Docker files. Uh, you uh, in, on internet, uh, you're gonna find a bunch of information about uh, this topic. And limit uh, the container intercommunication uh, by default. Uh, you can uh, communicate uh, with other containers, uh, even if, if you are not using the flag uh, link, uh, you can send uh, raw packages. And limit memory. Uh, this could help you to uh, prevent from those attacks. Uh, if, uh, if an, an, okay, so, we have that. Oh, well, this is the uh, this is the guide that I uh, based this presentation on, and uh, you, uh, Docker is uh, working a lot to provide a lot of documentation about uh, security. So, thank you for listening and questions. Welcome. <laughs> So, questions? Hello. Hello. So, I had a few surprises using Docker with uh, IP tables because it injects certain rules for networking. Do you have any tips on how to deal with that elegantly so I don't write some rules and then notice that Docker is actually bypassing them? Uh, is your container is the purpose of your container uh, manage the the network or what you're going to um, so I had a container basically I was running Kibana I just needed to expo expose Kibana port and limit uh, a bunch of everything else so I wrote some IP table rules on my host and then I realized that basically Docker had inserted um, I wanted I wanted the Kibana port to be only accessible from local host, and then I noticed that basically my IP tables rules saying only uh, only from local host, except were being bypassed because Docker inserted its networking rules, and they were actually short circuiting my rules. So, if I, it seems to be a common problem, do you know of an elegant solution? Uh, I don't. It depends of the of the uh, of your stack, but uh, we can discuss it if you want after the talk. Uh, Any more Python specific uh, security issues with Docker? Uh, for Python, uh, I've been, I've been uh, uh, using uh, Docker with Python for almost uh, one year and I think the, the, these uh, advices uh, applies for almost all languages, but especially for Python. Uh, it could be, I uh, don't uh, try to uh, create immutable uh, containers. So if, you, if your code have a has a vulnerability, uh, you can drop it uh, with read-only uh, file systems. So that, that's all. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's say help, uh, thank you once more to Andres. Thank you very much. <laughs>